Okay, guys, let's take a look at a proof for the quotient rule. Proof for the quotient rule will look like this. So you're going to want to prove if h of x is given by a function divided by a function, then the derivative is equal to the derivative of the top times the bottom. Subtract the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. So that's what we're going to want to prove. Now, notice here, there's a, a f prime and a g prime. So if I'm going to try to prove this from first principles without using anything else but what we know to be the um, definition of the derivative, we're going to be trying to change this and this we're going to be looking for limits as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h and limits as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. So we're going to be looking for those. So from the definition, h prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of h of x plus h minus h of x over h. Now, we know that h of x equals f of x over g of x. Therefore, h of x plus h equals f of x plus h over g of x plus h. As we've said before, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're just going to sub it in there and we're going to take this and we're going to sub it into there. That will give us the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h over g of x plus h minus f of x over g of x and all of that is over h or a nice way of writing it would be times 1 over h. Okay, so I'm going to get a common denominator here to make life look nicer. So this is going to give me f of x plus h times g of x, subtract f of x, g of x plus h, all over top of g of x plus h, g of x times h. So, let's take a look at this. Remember what I want. I want to be able to get an f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and I want to get a g of x plus h minus g of x over h. So I really, really, really wish that I had here, I really, really wish I had a negative f of x g of x. Because I can common factor out that g of x and be left with f of x plus h minus g f of x. Now, if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to wish this so much, I'm going to have to make sure that I don't make any changes here. So I'm going to add the same thing. And what that basically does is give me a zero between these two terms, right? And that leaves me with this guy over here. And all of this is over top of g of x plus h, g of x, times h. Now, I'm going to start breaking some things up here. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to first say why don't we do the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h g of x minus f of x g of x over top of g of x plus h g of x h. Now, this one is going to be plus limit as h approaches 0 
f of x, g of x, minus f of x, g of x plus h, over top of g of x plus h, g of x, h. Now, this is not in the right form. It needs to be g of x minus g. So I'm going to common factor out a negative from this one. So now taking a look here, I'm going to common factor out the g of x. So the g of x is going to come out. I'm going to take out the x, g of x plus h. I'm going to take out the other g of x. And I'm going to be left with f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That's this guy from up here. Common factor out the negative. So now this is going to be positive. This one's going to be negative. And at the same time, I'm going to common factor out an f of x if you don't mind. So the f of x is going to come out. And again, this is going to be the positive one. This is going to be the negative one over top of, this is h, and over top of here, this is g of x plus h, g of x. Okay, now, starting to see what I see, we want to bring this limit over to here, we want to bring this limit over here, and we'll take these limits as we go. So, I'm just going to move this sheet up a little bit. And I will keep working on it here. So the next one, next line is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x over top of g of x plus h and g of x. The limit as f of x plus h minus f of x over h, h approaches 0. Subtract the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x over g of x plus h, g of x. And finally, the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. OK, so we have some things there that we need to take a look at. So if I'm going to take this limit as h approaches 0, so that'll become g of x over top of g of x over top of g of x. So one of these is going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with 1 over g of x. This is simply going to be f prime of x. That's what this is. This is going to work out to give us f of x over top of a g of x and another g of x. There's no canceling out this time. And this is simply g prime of x. So, doing a little bit of mathematics with this, we'll get f prime of x over top of g of x minus f of x times g prime of x over top of g of x squared. Let's get a common denominator. f of x times g of x over top of g of x squared is now subtract f of x g prime of x over top of g of x squared. And finally, making it look pretty, derivative of the top times the bottom, subtract derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. And you've proven the quotient law from first principles. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's the quotient law from first principles.